Salutations, ladies and gentlemen, the Knife Raven here, back again with another video, and in today's video, my goodness am I excited. For today, I am taking a look at a knife from a new brand. Now, not new overall, just new to me, because frankly, I'm late to everything. Now, what you see before you is a Rosecraft blade. Now, Rosecraft Blades was founded a few years ago, I believe in 2021, by Andy Armstrong, the very well-known and well-respected American knife designer. He used to do a lot of work for Rough Rider, Rough Rider Reserve, and similar companies. He worked out of Smoky Mountain Knife Works in Tennessee, and it is in Tennessee where this company was founded. Now, these knives are, first and foremost, made in China, and apparently they are attempting to gain U.S. manufacturing later on, but they haven't managed to get that yet. Regardless, this is a knife by Rosecraft, and it's arguably one of the best knives I have shown off in a while. Now, I will get into the knife, but first, here's the box it comes in. We have a nice, typical cardboard RCB, which is their logo, Rosecraft Blades, there's their website, the logo again, the website again, you have a pull tab to open this little box, and this is the RCT-004, which stands for Rosecraft Traditional. Now, when you slide this open, the knife does come wrapped in wax paper. I've just kept this here regardless, and it has a foam cutout for the knife. So that's just how they come packaged. But that aside, and here is the knife. Now that is just beautiful. This is the Holston River Surgeon's Knife. And to anyone who has any real knowledge of traditional knives, you will know that this is based clearly off of a traditional doctor's knife. Now the doctor's knife is a pattern that I consider a bit of a guilty pleasure. It's not something I carry really ever, and it's not exactly a knife that suits me in any real aspect. It's not something I'd use. But despite that, it's a knife that interests me nonetheless, similar to manual stiletto knives. I'd never carry them, but I very much enjoy them. This is by far the best doctor's knife I think I have ever seen, and definitely the best that I own. What you have here is a very slender frame. You have two blades and a very clean set of colorations here. We have silver and black. That's pretty much it. And despite that, some might say it's boring or plain, but to me, I think that the simplicity really does this knife a whole lot of good, as frequently there are too many colors on knives and they just, they're very busy. This is a simple knife, and the colorations just match beautifully. Now, before I get into the knife itself, I will bring up my other doctor's knives. This is one by W.R. Case and Son from the USA. And this one is a pipe tool style doctor's knife made by Rough Rider. And it's convenient that this one sits in the center as not only would I say, well, it's the second most expensive, but also the second cheapest. And the Rough Rider would be the most budget friendly, the case is the most expensive, and this one would sit just in the center of the two. But amazingly enough, the quality on this blows the other two absolutely out of the water. So I'll bring these out of the way for a moment and focus on the Holston River. Now, first and foremost, you did notice the name probably, Surgeon's Knife. Why is it called that? Well, it's similar to a doctor. But the reason that it's called a Surgeon's Knife is the secondary tool is not the typical doctor's knife spatula. Doctor's knives used to feature this long, blunt tool that would fold out and allow the doctor to perform a variety of tasks, scooping powder into a pill capsule and using it as a tongue depressor if need be. But this has a very different attachment, and one that I vastly prefer. And that is a small Warncliffe blade. And I will wipe the oil off of this, as it is oily. Just get that out of the 
the way. And this blade is incredibly pointy. I've talked about Warren Cliff sometimes suffering from being almost blunt and the grind not doing them justice, but this is what a Warren Cliff should be. It's sharp as a needle, and the, if I can ever find it, I'm looking over, there we are. It's incredibly sharp, and it's very thin, and the blade is just a little razor. One thing I'll give Rosecraft, these knives come scary sharp out of the box. You do not need to touch them up. You don't need to give them an extra bit of a strop. They are using sharp when new, and that's something nice to see. But before I start fawning over the Warncliffe blade, we'll look at the fit and finish here. We have nickel silver pins and a nickel silver rosebud shield, which out of all the shields I've seen, it's definitely one of the nicer ones. I tend to find a lot of the shields that Case uses to be quite ugly, but this one I actually quite like. It's very simple, there's no writing on it, and to me, that does the knife very well, adding to the simplicity. We have stainless steel bolsters, hurrah for that, and you can see they have a bit of a brushed finish, and there is some milling on the bolster at the top. The, I guess I'd call this a bolster, but some might call it a cap, almost similar to the cap on a pruner. This is a flat bolster, and it's a typical thing for doctor's knives, as this would often be used as a pill crusher. And it also allows the knife to stand up on its own. So if that interests you, this knife can be displayed like this, akin to, again, the pruner that I showcased a couple days back. One thing about this that's interesting, the bolster on the top is considerably longer than that of a typical doctor's knife. You can see here the case is significantly shorter, probably about half the length. The transitions on this are beautiful. I can't feel any form of raised pins or shield. This is just sanded to perfection. The fitting is beautiful on this side as well. The handles are, I believe, linen micarta, black linen micarta, but they have an interesting texture to them. Micarta is usually either very, very smooth or somewhat coarse. This kind of sits in the center of the two. In fact, if I had to describe the feel of this knife, I'd say it feels a lot like ebony wood. It has the same coloration and almost the same grain in a way, but they have a very similar feel. They're very smooth, but they're not as, say, soft as smooth bone. But very nice feel. I wouldn't call this textured though. So if you want to look at it in one way or another, this would be smooth micarta, but very well done at that. But smooth handles, beautiful texture. Again, delightful appearance. We have no gapping whatsoever on the steel liners and springs. Just delightful, delightful work. And yes, finally, I'm going to look at the blades. Centering, by the way, is perfect on both of them, which is just wonderful to see. So we have a nail nick, half stop, the pull on this one I'd give about a 3 or a 4, and apparently that was intentional, as doctor's knives were never nail breakers, but rather they were meant to be opened easily, in the case of morbid as it may be, if a doctor was in the middle of a surgery where there may be blood, and they need to open the knife with their hands wet. So think of that as you will, but that's why the pull is intentionally lighter, for the historical accuracy. and. Frankly, I don't really mind, as it's still secure enough, and I don't feel like it's going to just close on me. We have a satin finish on the blade, a beautiful swedge, which I must say really does the knife well. The spear point on a case doctor's knife looks a lot more boring in comparison, at least in my eyes. So I very much appreciate the swedge, but... Again, the blade is a razor, delightfully sharp. No blade wrap on these as there are stop pins. 
as you can see there. So no risk of getting any chips or dings in the blade. Good walk and talk, despite the looser spring. And one of the greatest things I was worried about for this knife was blade play. For some reason, longer blades tend to suffer more from blade play. And both of the doctor's knives I have, the case, but very clear blade play there, and the Rough Rider, there's also some there as well. So it seems that these doctor's knives suffer from bad blade play issues, but this one is rock solid, and I'm incredibly happy to see that. We have the logo, RCB, Rosecraft Blades, and there is a bit of oil there. There you are. And on the other side, it says D2 Steel, and that is the steel used on these, and then RCT Rosecraft Traditional 004. And then the logo right there, which is Andy Armstrong's designer crest, if you will, or signature. So very well done. Again, delightful blade. I love D2 Steel, by the way, and I'm very happy that Rosecraft is using it. Many people have this weird bias against D2 and they say it's outdated, but again, I've said before, on traditional knives, you really don't need a super steel to begin with, but D2 is actually a lot nicer than people make it out to be. It can take a very good Rockwell hardness, sometimes sitting at around 60, which is akin to M390. Again, heat treatment has to, pay, has to play a part in that, as bad heat treatment can lead to soft steel, regardless of what that steel might be. But if it's done right, you can have a very tough blade that holds an edge for a good amount of time, and really, in the grand scheme of things, is not terribly difficult to sharpen. So to me, I really like D2 tool steel. And frankly, because it's a pseudo stainless carbon, sort of a middle ground, you can actually get patina on these, and it isn't that hard to remove it if you don't like it. So you will have to be a bit more careful about keeping these oiled, but they aren't going to be rust magnets like carbon steel. So very nice middle ground, and frankly, a good choice for a traditional knife. The secondary blade has a much nicer spring, I'd say sitting at around six. Again, very nice action. There's no stamping on this side, and on this side you just have the Rosecraft logo. Again, you have a swedge that lends itself beautifully to this blade. And again, this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous little blade. And naturally, yes, big surprise as it may be, this is the first thing I thought of to compare it to. Yes, I had to bring out an Etric again. But this is one of those rare occasions where I actually think that the other knife is nicer than the Etric, at least in the blade profile alone. But you can see the similarities. In fact, these knives are very, very close in overall length. They both have very long, thin handles. But there you are. Again, Lovely walk and talk here, and no blade play. Also, there is no warping in the edge. I know that's a concern for some people, myself included, but the edge is perfectly straight. No concern about having an off blade. So, there you are. That's the Rosecraft Blades Holston River Surgeon's Knife. Now, I have done the bulk of the review, if you will, uh, at least my initial thoughts of the knife. Now, a little bit of background, I suppose. Why is it called a surgeon's knife? Well, as I said, the Warrencliffe blade. Now, why is that? Apparently, and this was in an official blog post from Andy Armstrong on Rosecraft's website, the spatula to many would be the historically correct thing for a doctor's knife. Unless, of course, it's a single-bladed one like this case model. And he figured that that might sell to some people, again, the collectors of old patterns. But for the average user, it's kind of useless. And this, this Warrencliffe blade, would be a much more appropriate addition. Because considering the fact that the main blade is very, very long, if you use this knife, you might want a blade 
that's a bit shorter and capable of precision work. And again, a spear point, despite the fact that it is very sharp, doesn't have the most precise tip. But a Warrencliffe would. And he figured that this would kind of turn the knife more from a, I suppose, doctor's knife to a surgeon's knife. And the reason for that, I suspect, is this blade would be perfect for performing emergency tracheotomies. And that is definitely something that this would work with, and I don't know if that's a situation the average person's going to need to worry about being within, but if you are a practitioner of medicine, and that might come across you in your day-to-day -day work, well, then you will be happy to have this, as if you are lacking a scalpel, this would definitely be a good stand-in. With the large handle, you can get a very good grip on it, and considering how scary sharp the blade is and how dangerous that tip would be, it would work very well for any emergency surgery practices. Of course, it wouldn't be ideal, but if you're having to perform a surgery outside the confines of a hospital, the situation is not ideal to begin with. But there you are, that's why I suspect this is called a surgeon's knife, and if there was no other reason beyond Andy figuring that, well, people like Warncliffe blades, why not add a little pen-sized Warncliffe to go alongside your very comically oversized spear point. If there's no other reason besides that, well, then I still think it was a good design choice. Because when I first saw this, I saw the opportunity to get a doctor's knife with attachments that, or rather blades, I should say, not attachments, that I would actually use. And considering the fact that it was about 50 GBP-ish, it was very much not a premium-priced knife that was going to bankrupt me. What's sad is the fact that a knife like this, from Case, is worse in every single way. And I know that's a very broad thing to say, but truly, if you look at this knife, I reviewed this years ago, you've got a gap that runs the entire length of the left side of the knife, which is just horrible. And yes, it is a gap where light shines through. It's not just a cosmetic gap. You've got a blade that's only centered if you push it back in place. You've got blade play, a knife that didn't even come razor sharp, and the pins are slightly raised. So it's not the worst knife in the world, and I still think it's very, very pretty. It's a dainty little knife. This is a tank in comparison. There's no blade play. There's no gapping. Everything is smooth and just beautifully done. The centering is perfect. The blades come sharp. And the steel, and I know this is a very controversial thing to say one steel is better than another nowadays, D2 is better than True Sharp. And that is my opinion, yes. But True Sharp is kind of your typical 420 HC, and considering the fact that Case doesn't have the Paul Bowes heat treatment on their side like Buck does, it probably wouldn't even be the very highest quality 420HC. D2 is really a better steel, at least in my personal opinion. It's harder, tougher, holds an edge for longer, and I haven't really found it any harder to sharpen. So this knife features better materials, really. Far, far, far superior craftsmanship. And I think that the design is just beautiful. I appreciate the longer bolster. I like the fact that they actually use stainless steel instead of just nickel silver, which is what Case, Rough Rider, Arthur Wright, pretty much any traditional knife maker seems to do. So I appreciate the stainless steel. It's a nice change. It's easier to keep shiny. You don't have to worry about fingerprints as much on this one. And it's easier to polish if it does start to darken. Again, I prefer the steel, I like the swedging, the action on this is beautiful, I like the half stops, the, fin the fit and finish is masterful, and the price point is lower than the case. So if you are someone who likes doctor's knives and you're wanting a good quality one and you don't know where to go, don't, don't go looking for case, trying to find one on eBay, don't buy a Rough Rider and be disappointed, get one of these. 
This is the best doctor's knife I have ever had the privilege of handling. And it's the first doctor's knife that I actually want to carry. And I have carried a little bit. Granted, you know me, I don't put my knives through terribly extensive use, but I still have been carrying this about and doing some little tasks here and there with it. Haven't needed to sharpen it, of course. But it is still a perfect knife for someone who wants an unintrusive everyday carry that can slip into a pocket. It's thin, even though it has two blades. And before I forget, because I have been rambling as usual, measurements. This knife is coming in at three and three quarter inches closed. The Warren Cliff is coming in at two and a quarter inches and under a two inch cutting edge. And the long spear is coming in at just three inches. However, a two and three quarter inch cutting edge. Now I've had this discussion before and I have still sort of, un I, it's left unresolved. In the UK, they say you can't have a knife of over three inches cutting edge, but others have said that it's just a three inch blade. Now, again, I am no lawyer. Do not take whatever I say as legal advice. I'm just a guy who likes knives and hello, Alice. And sometimes likes to discuss the legality of those knives. Personally, I think this should be all right as it is just sitting in at three inches with the unsharpened bit. But again, as we all know, if there happens to be a bored police officer who doesn't like the look of you and finds that you're carrying a knife of over three inches, even if that isn't the cutting edge, they might get you in a bit of trouble. So I'm not going to recommend that you carry this in the UK as it might lead to problems. Even so, personally, considering the fact that the cutting edge is under three inches, I don't see this being an issue but I still don't want to go out and recommend everyone carrying this in the UK in case that leads to any problems. So for the most part, you should be fine, but at the same time, you can never truly know with these sorts of things. And it would save you the headache and the time of having to deal with any kind of false accusation. So this wouldn't be my number one carry choice if I was in the UK, but it's absolutely a knife that I would recommend if you, like me, Appreciate doctor's knives, but can't find many makers who still produce them, particularly in fair quality. But this is, again, the best doctor's knife I've ever seen. The fit and finish is on par with Great Eastern Cutlery, Boker, and the likes. The materials I very much appreciate. I think that the style of the knife is gorgeous. The design is well thought out. The selection of blades is perfect and it still preserves the tradition that is the doctor's knife. So, that was quite the ramble, as is to be expected with me. But there you are. And I think that this is... This is a good 10 out of 10 buy. If you don't like doctor's knives and you want something a bit more practical and robust, you know, like a typical single-bladed jackknife, this might not be the choice for you. But if you enjoy this type of knife, if you appreciate doctor's knives, this is a 10 out of 10 purchase. Again, this is the only one of these I've handled, the only Holston River for, for that matter, possible teaser for another video, but I think that the quality speaks for itself. I don't need to say anything else. So if you're interested in one of these, uh, I got mine at Heine Haynes in the UK, but you can buy them off of rosecraftblades.com and a variety of other retailers. So go ahead and give one of these a try. I was hesitant, but a few years after the company was founded and everyone was talking about them, I finally got in on it, and I can say I get it. So, there you are. That's the Rough, rough Rider. Looking at the wrong knife. That's the Rosecraft Blades Holston River Surgeon's Knife, and this is the Knife Raven, as always, signing off. Goodbye.